David Taylor, welcome to the Wrestling Changed My Life podcast, sir. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. I want to start at a, a juncture in your career. Uh, you'll have to let me know what year this was. What year was it when you had just wrestled over in Spain and you had a really hard time making the weight? Uh, I think this was after 2016, but before you decided to go up. Do you remember this tournament? So that was in, uh, yeah, I went on double tour. It was the last time I made 74 kilos. I went to Armenia first. Or, I'm sorry, I went to Spain first and Armenia second. Um, and it was in, like, June or July of 2015. Perfect. So I want to zero in on this because this seems like um, a pretty big turning point in the sense that on that flight, you were really frustrated with the weight cut, and you had decided to go up and wait. And – Coach Cunningham goes, well, I know this guy out in California that could help you gain the weight. Talk us, talk us um, and help us understand how you kind of came to that decision to move up a weight and what the process was then to bulk up to where you're at now. Yeah, I mean, I think I was just sort of at a spot in my life where you know, I've, I've been successful since I was eight years old, you know, and I, I graduated college and, you know, I think the next step that, you know, that I believed in and I think probably the wrestling community was like, hey, this guy's on track to – to win world and Olympic gold medals. But the reality was, I just wasn't, you know, I think that I finished and I, I kind of stalemated. I wasn't really getting any better because I was so, it was just like a constant fight with my weight. Um, and then my, and then injuries started building up, you know, because I was my holding my weight down and I was kind of getting distracted. Um, I had dealing with back issues for a long time. <clears throat> then my neck started hurting because I was compensating. And I remember specifically, in the matches that I would have with, <clears throat> with Jordan that year in 2000, I guess 14, probably, I guess, 2014, that I just, I was there, but then I just hit this like wall in the second period, not necessarily from a fatigue standpoint, but just like my back and my neck would just like basically give out. And I just get so stiff, you know, wrestling a guy like that, you start overreacting. So I had these frustrations, you know, then in 2015, um, it was probably my worst performance of the trials. Um, I lost to Dake probably, it was, it was really not that close. Um, came back, got third and I was so frustrated. I went on that double tour that summer and I'm like, I got to make changes or I seriously considering being done, you know, just, that was kind of where I was at. So I was on that trip and I remember being on the airplane texting my dad and, uh, texting Kale and Casey and say, hey, I'm going up after this tour. And actually I, funny part of it is I had a really, really hard time making weight in Spain. Like I remember I was sitting in the sauna and I'm just like dying. And, but it was one of those times where, and those people can probably relate to this when you're, you're cutting weight and it's like, you don't necessarily, you kind of get it down to science where, you know, like, man, if I, if I got sweat up to a certain point, I've lost this much weight and I was in there and well, I actually lost too much weight. And I was like a kilo under, which was crazy. Like that was like really, really light. And I'm like, man, this is, so I, I just didn't really recover there. I wrestled up. Eh, okay. Well, I went to Armenia. I actually made weight a lot easier because I had the relief of it. This is my last time. Mm -hmm. And I wrestled pretty good that, that tournament. Probably was probably one of my better times I had wrestled in a while at 74. But I think it was just that relief of knowing, okay, you know, I'm done with that. But then, you know, like you, you had said that, um, you know, Coach Calvita, you know, Sam Calvita in California had worked with Coach, Coach Casey in his career. And I remember talking with him and, He's like, all right, well, this is what we got to do. And I was like, well, I don't do these things. I don't do that. I don't lift. I don't. Lift. <laughs> and it's like, I, I, after I've gotten uh, to know Coach Cal later in life, he got off the phone. He's like, man, this kid's like, he's, I'm never going to help this guy. You know, like we're so far <laughs> off. Um, but then I, you know, quickly, you know, realized, man, okay, I'm going to have to change up pretty much everything I've been successful with my entire life. I'm going to change these things, you know, and I, um, you know, and I, and I did, and it's been a long process, you know, Coach Cal and I've been working together. I mean, it's really, you know, this is kind of the culmination getting, well, it was going to be 2020, even out to 2021, you know? So it's, it's been a five, really a four or five year process. And, you know, that was just, I think, you know, from a wrestling standpoint, you know, I was going to Penn state was probably the best decision I ever made, you know, just because it got me in a new, a new atmosphere and was able to kind of really um, help me get to a new level and continue to help me get to new levels. Um, I'd say the second best decision ever in my wrestling career was just going up weight class and, and seeking out coach, coach Calvita, um, and just was able to kind of fall back in love with wrestling and, um, in the whole process. So what do you, and for people who don't know who coach Calvita is, look up the training lab on Instagram, some of the most savage workouts you'll ever witness, um, whether it's 
you know, Pico or you or any of those guys out there. It just looks incredibly difficult. And he's a math math genius, I guess, and he really planes it all out. Um, and people have talked about him before, so I won't rehash it here. But do you remember, what were some of the things you go, Coach Cal, I just don't do this? And he's like, no, we're doing it. What was it? Uh, so he, he, Coach Cal, is like, he's very um, soft-spoken. Um, he's really, really intelligent. Like I said, I mean, he's a world-renowned math teacher. Um, you know, he has basically developed all his own algorithms, you know, in terms of recovery and his own recovery systems. You know, like everyone else is using, you know, whoop bands, you know, and he, we have a system that he uses, you know, that's like spitting out specific data. So, I mean, it's just, you know, really fortunate. You know, and I was one of the original people that was working with him. You know, now he's just, he's busy. You know, he, he, he has people all over the world, especially in the MMA community. I mean, he's working with, I mean, the best are constantly seeking him out. And he's having the same conversations with them, you know. And typically with Sam, it's like a 30-day period where he kind of tests you. He's like, hey, this is what we're going to do. And 30 days, you know, he knows what kind of, what your results are, if you've done what you're doing or not, you know, and I remember, uh, so I, I had taken pride at that point in my life, you know, people would be like, how much do you bench? How much do you squat? And I'm like, I don't lift weights. You know, I just, I just wrestle. I got wrestling strength. I do pull-ups, you know, and, um, but my back, you know, honestly, my back was hurt so bad that I couldn't even carry a load. Like if I, if I got under a squat bar, um, and I did, I couldn't, I couldn't squat at all. Like 95 pounds, couldn't squat. Wow. Um, I had like no hamstring strength. Um, and you know, if I did like a hamstring curl, I got to be in my whole college career. Like, like we go in for lifts and if I lifted at all and like had like any like soreness or taxation on, on like my hamstrings, my back would just tighten up so bad. So it was just like, we kind of made a decision where oh, I, I want to be ready for wrestling. I don't obviously want to like hinder that. And that was, you know, I, although I wrestled kind of getting off track, but all I wrestled all my matches in college, I mean, I was hurt the entire time. Like my back every single week was, I mean, I don't know. Most people probably weren't wrestling, you know, but to me, it was just, I was so important. I didn't want to miss any matches that I would just be like, barely, especially my junior and senior, my senior year specifically. I mean, there were a lot of weeks that I was not on the mat much, or if I was, it was just like play wrestling and I'm trying to monitor my weight. I was cutting a lot of weight, you know? So it was just like, that was kind of playing that whole factor of, you know, all these things that what I did and didn't do because that's what I had to do so I could go wrestle. But now at this level wrestling, like, I mean, we're talking about, Come on, Kyle Dake and Jordan Burroughs, you know, or, or Sobolov or that time Sargush, like these guys are the best wrestlers in the world, but are also just, they were stronger, faster, more physical than I was then, you know? So mm -hmm. it's like, yeah, I was a very technical wrestler, but when it came to those attributes that you need to be the best, then I didn't have those things. So when Sam's asking me these things, I'm like, well, I haven't done these things. And I, I kind of get all that stubbornness, but knowing that I need to do it. So, I mean, literally when we first started, you know, it's like, all right, we got to, you know, we got to do squats and we got to, you know, eat this way. And I had eaten so bad my whole life that I had like basically what's called leaky gut. So my stomach was, it, they said holes in my stomach. I had like, you know, really bad stomach problems. Like I was a mess. It's crazy. As good of a wrestler as I was, I mean, I was, I was doing a lot of other crazy stuff, you know? So, I mean, it probably took us a year, just a year to just build a foundation where I could actually then start developing like muscle mass and you know retaining nutrients from food and things like that um so yeah i can't really remember back exactly sam's so smart he could remember exactly the conversation but we talked about that not too long ago um but yeah i, I realize mean, you were that hurt in college man yeah well data back i mean I, I i had back problems like my whole life so i had this thing called well, I still do. It was called lumbar Sherman's. So it's like really, it's common with gymnasts and linemen. And it's when you're not physically mature, which I didn't f physically mature until I was out of, high, out of college. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, there's 70, 16, 17 year old high school kids that are, you know, more mature now than I was, you know, when I was a couple years post college. What happens is when you're not, um, you're, you're, you see your spine from all the wrestling that I did and, I, and wrestling bigger guys specifically and just over wrestling, you know, my, my base of my spine like compressed. And instead of your discs herniating out, like most people herniate, mine all herniate up. So my entire lumbar, it's like if you look at like an x-ray or MRI, um, it's just like black. Like usually you have white, like it, your discs are white. Mm -hmm. Mine are black, compressed. So there's basically no space. So like you have like, basically you have that, then you create it's like spinal stenosis where you have like narrow root canal. That's like a little bit genetic, but um, so I constantly had nerve issues. And then when you do that with like dehydration and weight cutting and all that kind of stuff, it just expedited it just made it all worse um so i dealt with that like 
all through high school. I mean, I had that as a young kid. I wore a back brace at two different times in my career, once in high school and once for like four or five months in college in the summer um, mm. after my sophomore year, going into my junior year. So I'd had that, and I dealt with this issue for a long time, um, but I always wrestled through it. And But then from doing all that, then I started getting neck issues, and I had just constant stingers. Like every time I'd shoot stinger, you know, so it's like right side, left side, um, getting like pain down my arms and in my hands and stuff, you know, so it's just all wrestlers deal with that, you know, and I just, I got to the point where I, I kind of knew how to moderate it, you know, like I kind of knew like certain things, but it got, and there was a point in my freestyle career where it was almost like every single match, like I would shoot, get a stinger, you know, it's just like, it's just such a, a frustrating thing. So, um, yeah. And, and now I based on any of those issues, you know, it's just crazy what with just like developing strength, muscle mass, good nutrition, and just understanding, you know, at this point in your career, like, okay, man, I'm, I'm a, you know, it's not like I'm not being tough. Like I, I go as hard as anybody goes when it's time to go, but there's times where like, Hey, I'm going to have to take this one, you know, and take this off a little bit so I can you know be ready for the, the next practice. So yeah, I look back and it just gives me anxiety even thinking about it. <laughs> because I, dude, I, I can't even imagine. I mean, you have the, the grind of making weight, you're in pain all the time. And when you don't have a good diet, and I'm sure it wasn't that bad, but you know, compared to what you're eating now where you're a, a machine, you know, you just kind of have this fog around you all the time when your diet's not right. I'm sure you look back now and you're like, how the hell was I eating that? This was my diet. This is no joke. Like, and I'm a, just like anybody, you're a creature routine, you know? So typically it's like, you kind of find what you like and you kind of stick with that. You're like, okay, well, and especially in wrestling, you know, you, you do something, you wrestle really good. You're like, okay, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I'm, and that's kind of what I did. You know, and I look back, I'm like, I don't even know how I even function. Like, I don't get it. So in high school, in high school, I mean, I don't know. High school is crazy, but in college, I would wake up and I would have a Chobani yogurt and I would put a mixture of oatmeal. So like, not like regular oatmeal, but like the oatmeal that you get, it's like the blueberries and strawberries, it's like just sugar, it's garbage. And I'd put that in the Chobani yogurt and I'd mix it up and that was my breakfast. But it's like nothing. I mean, it weighs like three ounces. And to me, it wasn't about calories or sugar or anything. It was about just total ounces. It's like, okay, if I just have three ounces here, you know, then, you know, I'll drink a little, you know, whatever, a little bit of water. And then for lunch, I would have a bowl of cereal, like Captain Crunch, but like, <laughs> Or you would just get the milk, so it's just like enough milk that wasn't completely dry. But it, again, weighed like three ounces. Then I go to practice, so that's what I'd have going to practice. Which is like now knowing what I know, it's like you, you pretty much couldn't do, you can't do any worse than that. Like that's pretty bad, <laughs> you know. That's that's yeah. bottom of the barrel. <laughs> to go to practice, you know, you lose your weight, and then no matter, and just depending on what I weighed after practice would be what I'd do for dinner. So it's like, okay, if my weight was good, I went to Chipotle, got a burrito. You know, if my weight wasn't good, I'd get, you know, the half of the half of the sandwich from Subway. And that's like all I would have. And then it's just like, then you're just hungry till, di till like you're trying to go to bed. And then I'd have a, like a cliff bar or something. And it was just like that every day, you know, like, and it's just, I got to the point where, you know, I would get my weight down at 165 where I'd weigh like, I don't know, 170. And I would just, so I'd be miserable for like two months, weigh like 170. And then I just kind of could maintain that where I could kind of just hit weight and go back up. But I was just like a skeleton, you know? And mm. uh, it was just, I could rely on my technique. I could rely on like, I knew what I could put forth when I was wrestling. And, um, but yeah, it was bad. I mean, it's, it's pretty bad. So that's the foundation. Uh, that's kind of the background you have going into working with Coach Calvita. And I've heard people say that when you work with Coach Calvita, you're pushed to points where it's a flight or flight. Um, and whether it's, you know, the video of what it could be you or it could be someone else in his garage, he has like this stationary bike. And I, I just want to ask you, are these the most you know, demanding workouts you've ever been a part of in your entire career? Yeah. So, I mean, there's only a few of us that work remote. I mean, pretty much with Sam, you're, you're kind of all in. So, most of those guys live there, you know, like the fighters, you know, and they're, they're all world champions now, you know? Yeah. So it's, there's a, there's a, you know, is a reason why everyone's so successful. I mean, uh, the ones that work remote are Pico, myself, uh, Michael Chandler, I think are the only, and Lance Palmer are the four that, that work remote. Um, but it's like, I mean, I, I wrote a blog about this a long time ago and basically it's just like, you're all trying to like 
please like this person. Like you're like, you're just, you know, we're all trying like, it's a battle. It's like, you send your workouts and you're just like, well, you know, these are what these guys got. And you're like, okay, well, I'm going to put myself through this brick wall. I'm going to run through it. I'm going to try and beat these dudes. You know, it's like this competitive atmosphere. But when you're there, it's like that plus 30% more because it's just insanity. I mean, it's just like you, you're ner- like, when I'm out there, I've like, I'm just nervous before I know. Cause you don't know, like when I'm at home, I know what my workout's going to be. And I'm already nervous when I'm there. I have no idea what the workout's going to be. I just know it's going to be like this hour and a half of just pain and misery. <laughs> Pretty much what it's going to be, but it's just, and it, but it's just constant competition. So it's, it, you know, and that's just what coach Cal has got a gift of motivating people. And he's got a gift of um, just, I don't know. He, he says it and you're going to do it. You know, he's like, Hey, we're going to, we're going to lift this, you know, okay. or I've never done this before, but I'll get it. You know, Hey, we're going to do this. Well, okay. I've never done this before. I'll do it. You know? And it's just, he, he's got this special, it's, it's called the garage, you know, and you have to be, not anyone's just invited to the garage. You know, you have to earn, earn your, you know, earn it being there. And if you're someone that doesn't, you know, there's a lot of people that have been in the garage once and never come back, you know, and it's kind of like a rite of passage to be there. And uh, you know, so he's just, he's got a special thing and you know, I'm super, it literally, I mean, talking about wrestling, you know, your podcast is you know, wrestling change your life. I mean, coach Cal changed my life. I mean, I, he just from, from a whole perspective of how to approach training and, and truly wanting to be the best in a whole like all in approach. Like I always thought I was all in. I mean, I, you could ask any coach you've ever been with and, and in terms of like what I put forth in practice was all in, you know? Um, but it's all that stuff on the outside. Like, but I didn't know, I didn't really know, like, these are the things you need to do to be successful diet, nutrition, you know, 10, 12 years ago was just, I mean, you think you're eating good because you know, you're, I don't know, not eating candy, you know, you don't even get it. Like the whole level of a next level, what it is that Sam really opened my eyes to. And, um, yeah, so do you pretty- think, do you think when Kale was going through it, you know, knowing that Kale was your coach when he was going through in the early two thousands, was he just getting by on his diet or was he well ahead of his time and knew how to eat properly and was already working out like a Calavita athlete would? Uh, I mean, like how could he not spot that and say, Hey dude, quit eating this crap all day. Uh, or maybe it, he did. Okay. Oh, he'd always be like, dude, you gotta stop eating candy. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, coach, I'm, I'm tech following these guys. And I'm paying these guys. Like I, I mean, I, my routine after weigh-ins was I would weigh in and then I would drink a soda. And I, in my mind, like, I was like, I w- it was like, again, it was like this like stubborn pride thing. Like, Oh, these guys are, you know, drinking water. I, I'll drink soda. You know, I feel good drinking. It makes me feel good. You know, it's just like, it was just, stu- it was just really it was stupid, you know, but, and he'd be like, don't do it. But at the same time, you know, he's like, all right, that's what you, if that's what you do. That makes you feel good. You know? And, um, but yeah, he told me all the time, you got to stop doing this stuff. And I just, I'd laugh at now. I'm like, I wish I would listen, you know, yeah. like I, you know, you told me to do this when I was wrestling, you know, I would do that. But outside of it, you know, I just, I thought what I was doing was getting the job done, you know, and it was to an extent, but you know, it definitely kind of going back to that t- time frame need to change. And, you know, it did, it, it, it's good to change now. Yeah. Huge. I mean, one of the things I found interesting about your story is that, when you first went up in weight classes, you really had a hard time handling the extra weight. And I never thought about that, but you think about putting 10, 15 pounds on someone's frame that you actually feel it. And I, I heard when you were on the T-Run Funky show way back when that you actually used to get like out of breath walking up the stairs and you doubted if you could even hit an ankle pick anymore. Is that true? Yeah. I mean, so I've done, I've gone on weight my whole life, you know, and I didn't really, as a, as a kid, I didn't cut weight. Um, and when I got into, in high school, you know, I was an undersized 103 pounder my freshman year. Um, my sophomore year, I cut a little bit of weight, but not really. I mean, I weighed 108, 110 pounds, so not much. Um, then my sophomore year at 112, I cut a lot of weight. I should have I should have gone up, but we had a really good team. We were national champs that year. You know, my best friend was 119 pounds, you know, so it was just like there wasn't – there wasn't in my mind, I wasn't going to go up. Looking back, I'm like, yeah, if I would have gone up, that would have probably been better. But mm-hmm. that, was, that was tough. Then I went up to 135. So from 112 to 135, that was a huge jump. You know, being 103, 112 pound and being really good and really dominant at those weights and then going to a middleweight. So just to put in perspective back then, you know, for guys that remember, like, you know, 103, 112, you know, but then at 135, 140, like the Alton brothers were there. Um, 
like Josh Kendig was there. So Ian these guys, Miller. yeah, and Ian Miller ended up wrestling the first match that year at Ironman. Like, I'm just thinking of like, at the time, Owens were 135, 140 pounds and beating college guys in college opens. Mm. So that was a jump that I had made, you know, like from that weight class. That was a huge jump. Um, and I was, and I remember same thing. Like, I was like, that adjustment period was tough. But in high school, you're not dealing with like grown men as much, you know? So, you're just uh, – like, I remember going to this, like, tour de force camp at the time with Sean Bourmet. It was, like, a really mm-hmm. tough – I was wrestling with the Altons and stuff. And I remember it was confidence boosters because, like, Andrew and I talked about this. Like, he's like, yeah, man. Like, like, they would get me on my feet, but I could wrestle with them on the mat. And that was always my – kind of my gift when I wrestled with better guys was – in high school, I wasn't really that good on my feet, but I was really good on the mat. I could scramble, and I could ride and turn. That's how I won how my biggest matches. So on my feet, I was just, like, surviving. And I had some good skill, but okay. in my best – matches I was just it was always mat wrestling that was like what I relied on so I'm like okay yeah I can compete at 135 like I have some confidence I can do well and I had a good year that year then in college you know went to 157 that was a big jump you know and then I kind of kind of stayed in at 165 um but really looking back like I should have gone on 174 and probably into 184 you know like if I knew what I knew now like and what the detriment that I was had to my body to try and keep my weight down and like really probably stalemated my development um I probably should have gone up but same thing like I wanted to win national championships as a team and it was just like okay 165 just makes the most sense for this team and you know for me to stay at 165 like this makes a lot of sense so when I when I when I finally got done I mean now we're talking about like a like an eight nine year period where I could have been going up and wait during that time and I wasn't I was kind of like well that's probably not much probably like, like five year period where I kind mm-hmm. of probably maybe gone up a little bit more than what I did going but and I didn't well I'd gotten used to like always cutting weight and that was like how I was going to be successful you know what I mean Mm -hmm. so um when I went did go up finally and I was putting on that mask now I'm wrestling like big humans you know (laughs) like like, full-grown beard like big muscles I mean it's just like a different type of person that I'm trying to move the amount of mass like I mean that I'm trying to like develop and move is tough so not only am I carrying like a 20 pound backpack, you know, going from like, I would weigh, you know, 180, 185 pounds. So it wasn't like I was really like gaining that much more weight. Like I weighed, you know, 195, 200 pounds, but it was just like the, it was like that weight was extra mass. I'd never carried before as well as wrestling guys that I could never wrestle with. So it's mm-hmm. like that moving that other mass. So, yeah, I mean, I would wrestle for like, 30 seconds and I was toast like I mean it, it was so bad I mean it was embar- it was embarrassing I remember practices I remember one specific practice wrestling Vincenzo and he was an incoming freshman and Vincenzo has really heavy hips I mean obviously we've seen that and I go out and I get a takedown two takedowns and it was like five minutes ago I don't know and I just hit this wall and I'm just I mean I remember just feeling so embarrassed like I'm, hit, I'm hitting these shots and I just he's like running behind me and I'm just dying. Can't get up. It's like I'm like the, the slowest person. I, I'm getting taken down. I know if I get back up, I'm going to get taken down again. I remember like this moment and being like, what am I doing? Like I might need to go back down. Like I don't know if I can keep doing this, you know. And uh, I just – that was like every practice for me. It was like I didn't know what my form is going to be like. Am I going to get exhausted? Can I make it through six minutes? Um, and, uh, you know, if I did it again, I wouldn't have – I wouldn't have – I think I got up to like 210 um, because I knew that I needed to put the mass on. Like, I'm like, I have to put the mass on so I can gain the weight and like, or I can get strong and then come back down. But like, Mm -hmm. I was not 210. I was, I mean, obviously terrible. Like, I I don't, I think that's the most I ever weighed, but I was really like maybe like 205, 206. I went to Ajbrajan and again, same thing, like embarrassing performance. Like I wrestled, um, my first match, I was a guy from Uzbekistan. And it's like, if you watch, go back and watch this match, like, it's exactly what I'm saying. It's on, like, YouTube. And I score, and we're getting a scramble. And I basically am t- – I'm so tired. I'm like, I, there's no way I'm winning this match. So, I took injury. I ba- and it was like it, – it's, it's embarrassing to think about this. But, like, I was Ooh. not hurt. But I'm like, this is it. Like, I'm going to lose this first-round match, my first tournament A6. Like, I have no chance to win this. I'm so tired. And uh, I'm like, so I get a little bit of time and I win this match, like squeak it barely. Um, and I'm just like, couldn't recover. I'm like, this is like, what am I, what am I doing? Like, this is going to be, uh, I don't know how I'm going to recover. So I go to my next match against, uh, 
I wrestled the guy. The guy's pretty decent. He's just like he's at ninety seven kilo now, but he beat me like six zero, and it wasn't even really close. Like I mean, he was just stronger and than I was, and I wasn't even close to taking him down. I lose this guy. He was wrestling uh, Lashgari from Iran, who at the time was real, one of the really high level guys. Mm-hmm. Um, and he'd medaled at the Worlds and Olympics. Like he was like a consistent like bronze medal guy. And Lajgari's beating him, and the guy from Azerbaijan does the classic, like, you know, he's losing, calls injury time, and then gets a takedown right at the end. I'm like, oh, I'm back. I can wrestle for bronze. That was, like, the worst thing. I wrestled Lajgari, he me 10-0 in, like, two minutes. Oh. Just, like, picked, threw me down. I mean, I get tagged by the Iranians in this video every day, pretty much. You know, they're like – They're relentless on you, the Iranian fans on Instagram. Yeah. They're always tagging you in shit like that. So they tag Con- you in this still? Oh, this video is like constant. I mean, I'm really <laughs> Agnes. I'm like, guys, this is so long ago. I would gladly wrestle Lajgari right now. Like, let's get him going. Get him out of retirement. Like, I would love to flip the script on this match. But at the time, like, he was the peak, and I'm, like, terrible. Like, I wasn't even, like, top 100 in the world at 86 kilos at this time. I was so bad. And uh, – but I came off that tournament, like, I, I am, like, lost. Like, this is – I'm not even – not even close, you know, and, but then it's just, you just stay with it. You know, it's just like constant day in, day out, you know, of uh, just getting a little bit better. And uh, by the time the trials came around, I had actually had gotten sick and I lost like 10 pounds and I was weighing like 193 and it was like the best thing I did. I started feeling better again, you know? So I think if I would have done it again, I wouldn't have tried to get as big, but you know. But before the trials though, we got to get to the world cup, man. That's like the big turning point in your career, in my opinion, uh, you could tell me otherwise, but you get, I mean, I didn't even realize that you had gone to that other tournament and gotten teched for, for third and fourth. And so you have a, a really tough workout against Vincenzo, but at the whole time, it sounds like you're keeping the dream alive. The Olympic dream never goes out, even though it seems pretty far away at times. Is that fair to say? Or was it getting uh, pretty far away at that point? Yeah. I mean, I I'd gone up and it was, it was as distant as it ever felt. You know, I just, but, you know, I just kind of, I remember, I mean, I haven't talked through it a lot and, but shortly after that, so this timeline was like, this is like, okay, got back from Armenia, put on this weight. I went like, I think it was like November, went to Azerbaijan. So this is like shortly after gaining like, you know, half a bunch of weight, terrible. Um, Then uh, this is still 2015. So 2016 comes around Olympic trials. Um, and now after the Olympic trials, that was when I kind of started, uh, getting adjusted to the weight. So this is like a full year basically where I'm finally like, okay, I start feeling a little bit better. Um, and then, uh, went to the, I'd say it's kind of two changing points. So in 2000, it's funny because it's so long ago, I was just going to try to remember 2016, I went to the world clubs cup. Yeah. And that's what I'm thinking of. Sorry. Were you wrestled Sharifov? You know, so a World Clubs Cup was in, like, November, December. Then the World Cup was in February. Okay. So just, like, the amount of, like, from that period of time was a big deal. So my, my first match, the World Clubs Cup in Uzbek in, uh, in Ukraine, I lost this guy from Ukraine. Again, same thing. Like, I'm just, like, I mean, I lost. And it was just weird. Like, I mean, I just felt like I wasn't there. And – I remember after getting off the, and people, guys, you know, we had a really good team. We won it that year. And, you know, it's like, I was with Dake and Snyder and Derringer and everyone's wrestling well, you know, and I'm just like, people, they don't know what to tell me. They're like, basically, I'm like, this, this guy might be our weakest link on the team. Like, that's basically like what I, that's how I <laughs> felt. Um, I don't think, I, that's the first dual meet I've ever lost since I was uh, in high school. You know, so I just, it wasn't something, now usually I was reliable, like anchor piece, you know, and so I lose this first match, next match, it's like, felt a little bit better, next match, a little better, and then in our finals match, I wrestled uh, Karimi from Iran, who had just got bronze the year before, and I was kind of back, like I just, I, I beat him some scrambles, and I just, I won that match pretty handily, like 11 to 5 or something, and felt good. That was the first sign of like, I made the right decision going up. Then uh, go through Christmas, come back, went to uh, uh, Paris in January and wrestled well. Um, at this point, I'm like begging Bill to go to the World Cup because I'm like, hey, I, I want to go. I believe. I know exactly the path that we're having. I know I'm wrestling these four like really good guys, and I'm ready for this challenge. You know, So that was like 
in that six, that you know, from that period of time, from like November, November, December, January, February, that four month period went from like losing to a terrible person um, to wrestling, you know, probably the best tournament I've ever wrestled. And then kind of solidifying myself as this was the right decision. So you go to Iran, what's the war path for you to go through? Cause I don't think people have realized how, how tough that weight was that year for you at the world cup. Yeah. So we were like in the pool of death is what they called it. So my first match I was wrestling, uh, Mark Dato Margishvili from Georgia, who, uh, I mean, in two, and he had won multiple medals that time, but I mean, he really was set up to be in the finals of the Olympics in 2016. You know, he had like a great bracket. And Jaime Espinal uh, beat him first round. And that was, and then Jaime took that path to the finals. So, Marcus Billy was pretty good at that time. And uh, so, that was my first match. Then I had uh, Baliev from Russia, my second match. Then I had Sharifov from Azerbaijan. I mean, Sharifov has beaten, I mean, he was Olympic champ. He beat, he's beaten Kale, he's beaten Kyle, he's beaten Jaden. I mean, he's beaten pretty much all the best guys in the world. I mean, he's lost to Sedgelia pretty close, like in the Europeans. But I mean, he's, he's a guy that's, I mean, he's tricky. He's got a couple good tricks, but he's also just pretty dang good. I think he was trying to go down to 86, you know, for the Olympics. And I think he ended up getting bronze that year. Um, and uh, so that was my, in my, basically my semis. And then in the finals was, was Gazdani from Iran. So, I mean, it was, uh, you know, oh four world Cups and two Olympic champions. You know, those are my four matches I had in a row. Didn't you pin Yazdani there? Yeah. Dude, the excitement when I watch that one is hard to, hard to describe me, especially just knowing all the frustrations and all the challenges you had gone through. Um, it had to be a huge moment. Yeah, I mean, I walked into that, like, just, that was the most excited I had been for a tournament since, I can remember, I knew I was going to have this, like, I'm getting chills right now, because it's just, that was a huge turning point, because to this point, like, it was almost like I had found ways to lose big matches, you know, like, I beat a lot of really good guys, but over the last handful of years, you know, just, like, thinking about, you know, the matches that I had had is, you know, I wasn't finding ways to win, you know, and it was just, um, I was excited, to train you know I felt really good going to that tournament I'm like this is my chance like this is my chance to really prove that I can that I, I, I deserve to be here you know and I can compete on this level um and uh I mean my first match against Marcus Vili I was losing I mean I was just like I was in on shots and he kind of just tricked me and I was losing 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 and I finally broke through got a takedown and then on the whistle start got a double weight for four and that kind of like really I won that match and then in the Valiev I got forward right off the bat and then I just like, I mean, I was just all over him. He got so tired. I mean, he couldn't even, he couldn't even get off the mat. And I ended up teching him 14-4. So I'm like on a roll. Then I was with Sharif off. And same thing, like it just was like hitting my shots, felt great. I teched him 10-0 or 12-2 maybe. Oh. And then um, then going into uh, in the finals against, you know, we're in against Iran and we're getting not, we're losing as a team. And this building is like small. So it maybe fits like 2000 people, but there was like 5,000 people. And it How felt, was it? I mean, it just felt so heavy. Like it was like, no, I mean, I've wrestled in Rack Hall. I've wrestled in Carver. I mean, I've wrestled in like the biggest arena. This was nothing like it because Iranian fans are just like constantly yelling, screaming, horn trumpets, like this, like constantly on it. And Yazdani is, I mean, he's like their guy, you know? So it, um, and I kind of earned their respect because the way that I wrestled early in the bracket, like, cause they all know who these guys are that I've beaten. And I was like, kind of getting cheers. Like when I was beating these guys, kind of, cause Iranian guys, I mean, they're Iranians. Are, they're very big fans of wrestling. I mean, they like good wrestling. They love Yazdani. So I'm very, <laughs> Iran. like I, they love me or they hate me. There's nothing really in between because of that. <laughs> so I'm wrestling Yazdani and uh, come out. I remember it's like, I mean, he's just like, I mean, his pace is insane. You know, it's like, um, and he was on me and, I got caution. I had two cautions in the first, in the first period, first three minutes on push out. So he'd push me out and they were cautioning me, you know? So it's like, okay, in three cautions, you're out, you're disqualified. So I remember I got hit for my second caution. So I'm down two, zero or three, zero, three, zero, three, zero. And the rep, we kind of, the whistle starts and then he stops it. And he's like, basically looks at me. He's like, Hey, you have two cautions. Essentially, if you get pushed out one more time in this match, you're disqualified. That was basically what he was telling me. You know, I'm like, okay. That makes sense. I got to get going, you know, and I, that was that point where I had to make a decision 
where, okay, I'm, I'm either going to disqualify embarrassed or I have to fight and find a way to get through this dude that I haven't got close to even get in position on for the first two minutes. And I get a takedown right in the period, like right in the period, one second left. So I go in the break three, two, and I'm like, I'm right here. I'm right where I want to be against this guy. We come out, we get an exchange. He gets a push out, but we're like in that scramble. I was in a quad pod. So it was four to two. Um, then we come back in and this was like probably the biggest spot of the match. He snapped me down and he's like running corner and I like stand up, get in a scramble and I sit corner. Now it's like, I've been kind of dominated, but it's four, four. I have two takedowns. He has three, he has four pushouts. So now I'm winning on criteria and I come back and be like, okay, well now he's got to take me down. You know, um, the next exchange, uh, I get another takedown. So now I'm up six, four and I'm like, he's exhausted. I'm exhausted, but I'm beating him back to the middle and he's going to have to take me down. He hasn't taken me down yet. He has to take me down. He can't say, I'm like, he's not taking me down. Um, and this time the crowd's loud and all, you know, all this kind of stuff. The next exchange, I reattack him. I take him down, split the middle and pin him. And it's just like, I get up and it's like crazy emotion. It's like basically all these things I've been talking about over the last, like how many years I pin the world champion, like the Olympic champion, like the best guy that, that, you know, the gone through this gauntlet of four people, and it's just, like, all this, like, frustration and, you know, am I going to be able to, like, get through? I just kind of solidified. And it was just dead silent. Like, it was, like, dead silent in this arena. And then it just erupted, you know? And it's just, like, crazy, you know? And I think that was uh, that was a huge – I mean, that's just – that moment is something I always remember. And it's just been a huge, huge changing moment, you know, just from a, a confidence perspective, you know, at 86 kilos, you know, obviously, like, wrestling a guy of that caliber, being in those, like – fight or flight situations and determining like, Hey, I'm going to sit here. I'm going to fight, you know, and, and find a way to get this done. Dude, the amount of times that you could have hit the panic button and escaped is crazy. I mean, even in that match, once you'd already had a great tournament, you're down, you know, four or two or whatever it was, you could have been DQ'd. I mean, there were so many places to, uh, to bow out, but you kept going. And then lo and behold, the next year at the world's, 2018 world's first round you got this guy again what's your self-talk going into that match I mean it was the same thing like um I knew going into it like I'd prepared that I was gonna wrestle in the first round um because he hadn't competed that year so he had no seating points um and I I, I think I don't know I think I was number one seed on point no I wasn't the turkey guy was number one because he just got like the easiest draw everywhere he went he placed in every single tournament so he had more points than I did and I had won I gone to four tournaments, won four tournaments. He'd gone to like six tournaments, placed in six tournaments. So he was uh, the number one. So I was number two. Seed. Oh. And I'm, I just had this feeling that yeah, Zion's on seed. I'm going to wrestle in first round. And sure enough, like bracket comes out. I remember like, you know, hey, Coach Zadik, who do I got? You know, and, you know, Coach Russell, who do I got? And they're kind of looking at me like, they're like, you got Yazani. Like they're nervous. And I'm like, let's go. Like I'm so pumped. I'm like, <laughs> I'm ready to go. You know, they're like, yeah, okay, yeah, let's go. Yeah, it's going to be great, you know? And I'm like, listen, if there's anybody prepared to wrestle this kind of guy first round, it's me. You know, like, I'm more prepared. I'm excited. My weight's under control. I mean, there's, like, let's go. Like, I mean, just beat the best guy first round, you know? But then it's like, okay, what I got? Oh, I got this guy next round. Oh, Belarus, okay, he won the last tournament. Oh, I got Tor Blanca. Man, I barely beat him twice this year. Russia, okay. So I'm like, okay, not only got to beat Azdani, but I got to beat literally the next best guys in the bracket every round after that to get to the finals but I'm like okay I got to focus on this match only first and it's the same thing I mean I knew it was gonna be an absolute battle and it was this, it was almost I mean the match was scripted almost the same as the last one I mean if I had stopped wrestling in positions I think I went back and looked at it and he would have I think he would have scored like 11 straight points on me you know if I would have just stopped wrestling let him get to go behind let him get to take down the edge you know do his things and that was the difference for me you know, so instead of it being 11-0, I wanted to break down 6-2, to two, which is still not ideal. Yeah. You know, um, those little things, you know, against a guy like that has added up, you know, and I think um, it added up in that match and was able to come back in the second period and score nine straight points. And, you know, a guy like that, he's just – he dominates everybody, you know, and I'm, I just have been the only one that can withstand his early just pace, which is – I mean, I wrestle high pace and his early pace is higher than my pace, you know, and it's just, you know, it's, so it's exhausting. You know, I know I have to wrestle at that point of be a, just pure exhaustion where it, the technique isn't even there anymore. It's just like, it's reactionary. That's really what it is. I mean, we're just, we both wrestle so hard 
that if you get that point where someone's going to give and so far and in the last two matches he's you know he's given obviously he's going to make adjustments to that I'm making adjustments to that as well but I mean that match is from a there's so many like exchanges that we wrestle it's not like most high level matches it's like one exchange I mean we have more exchanges in the first 15 or 20 seconds of our matches than most high level matches have the entire time at that level so I mean you know we have 20 30 scoring exchanges in our matches that and maybe they're zero maybe they're push out maybe they're a take down the opposite direction I mean it's just that's just the way that we are and um and then to be have to recover and do that, you know, four more matches, you know, and then with him too, you know, losing, you know, he'd won the last two years, dominated pretty much everybody. I mean, I, he pretty much texts or pins everyone he wrestles. I mean, there's no close matches guys that I, even that I struggle with to score on. He throws around like ragdolls. I mean, he's just, he's very good technically. And he just has this aura of dominance that people are just fear. They fear him. And, uh, I mean, and after that match, I mean, he just killed everybody. He dominated everyone to come back and get to get bronze, you know. So, I mean, he's – that's the guy that I think about, for sure, when I'm training. You know, I know, like, he's young. He's going to keep getting better and stronger. And um, But, you know, that's just – that's an exciting thing to think about. You know, that, that rivalry that we've had is – I think yeah. it's, you know, it's one of the probably biggest ones in the community. I love it. It's big. It's it's a huge one for sure. I mean, there's a lot of lot of great matches out there right now. Um, the one thing I wanted to ask you before we move on from this to some other more tactical questions is, when you when you when uh, when the coaches told you who you had and you felt like you were ready. I know we've all been there before when we say we're ready, but deep down we know we're lying to ourselves. Um, did you did you ever have any sense of doubt? And if so, how do you manage that before a match like that? So I had earlier in my career. Yeah. Um, but not when I didn't, you know, I just, I just like, I'm at peace with it. I, I had done everything to prepare. There was no stone unturned, you know, it's just like my diet, my nutrition, my training, my preparation, my peaking, my recovery, like everything I had done. Right. You know, I just like, I had been in my mind, I believed that I could be, I'd been the best in the world for two years and I'd sat and watched and um, it was my time, you know, it was just like, I wasn't, although I, I even wrestled a great first period in that match, you know, like, but I think, it was just, it was just kind of will, you know, like I told you at that point. And it was because I believe, I believed in a lot of factors that would, uh, would make a difference in that match. And yeah, I mean, sure. I, I, I'm sure everyone has a little bit of doubts at different times, but I didn't, I just didn't, you know, I just knew like, if I want to be a world champion, which something I said since I was a kid that I got to go through this guy. So there's just no way around it. You either get it done or you go home, you know, that was it. Yep. Dude, it's, it's awesome to watch, and your story is incredible because you've been the, the face of wrestling for a long time, but I don't think a lot of people realize the, the struggles you went through internally from, call it, 14 through 2018. And I just I always imagine that if you would have told a young David Taylor in 2014 that you wouldn't make a world team until 2018, you probably would have lost it and thought, what the hell happened? You know. But to get there now, it's just incredible to see where you're at. Awesome. Thank you. Now, when you look at going forward, we all want to see the JB match. I hope it happens. I know you probably can't talk about it, but if it happens, we're going to be really excited. Um, one thing about you, though, and we're going to wind down here, you seem like you're a guy who attacks every day with a purpose. So I'd just love to know, what's your daily routine in terms of what time do you get up? Um, what, are you, you know, what are some of your habits? If you're a creature of habit, what are some of the habits you're doing day in and day out? Cause I, I just, I really am inspired by following your, uh, your social media as I know a lot of other people are. Um, and your habits change when you have a baby, you know, it, 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 like, you know, usually sure. in the past over the last, you know, the success that I've had since what, you know, 2017, you know, 17, 18, even 19 dealing with my injury, you know, it was just like, yeah. I mean, it was just like, you knew these are certain days I'm doing certain things and nothing was getting in the way of those things. Um, you know, now, you know, this year it's been definitely a little bit different. Um, you know, just having my, my wife is, you know, those that are that, that have been around and understand, like my wife is such a, I mean, she's the real MVP. She really is. I mean, she really manages everything. You know, she's, you know, making sure that she's really the one that's like, David, you need to get up and go do this. You know, Hey, you need to put your phone down and stop dealing with this stuff. You know, you need focus. You need time for you to like really dial in. Cause I, I, my mind, I feel like I can die. I can handle a lot of things on my plate and I definitely handle more than probably anyone else, any professional wrestler 
um, in America for sure, you know, and just, with, well, I have a lot of things going on. And, uh, but I think that um, from a routine standpoint, I would say, you know, I'm, I'm you know, trying to, I get to bed, you know, at a reasonable time, unless it's like Sunday, Monday, or Thursday night football, and I have my fans <laughs> team rolling. And, you know, and like, but that's just like give and take. Like I stay up to 11, baby's up at 12, you know? So it's like, it's, it's kind of a tough thing. On the other nights, you know, we usually were in bed around 10, wake up around seven. Um, London wakes up at like four. But I think it's, you know, it's just, you just got to adapt, you know? It's just like, hey, this is, this is something new. You know, we're still, we started a family and, you know, London's just, uh, she's, she's a ball of fire. She's like high energy, you know? And it's, it's definitely um, been, been an adjustment. You know, it's like, I think, traditionally like being successful in wrestling you gotta be pretty selfish with your time so it's like when you're recovering you know like you're not really doing anything you know and and now it's like you can bounce practice and you know now we're you know I'm spending time with my daughter um eating you know balancing that in between then going back to practice then going back to my club at night and coaching you know so it's like it, it's kind of a it, much different dynamic so you say I'm a creature of habit I am but I'm still adjusting to this new new thing you know but again it's like being able to you know really rely heavily on my wife and you know, she's amazing, amazing mom, you know, amazing, like, and just keeping everything focused in. So she's really, the, really the main consistent factor in my life and my success is just really her and how she continually helps me navigate everything that we're going through. Now, David, I'm an Illinois guy, and people listening to this podcast know that I talk about the IKWF and the Illinois high school scene more than I should. I'll never forget when a young Kendra Kennedy for the Wrestling Factory qualified for the state tournament. Jimmy Kennedy was a legend among legends. You can't even understand. I'm sure you've heard it, but he was a god in Illinois at the time. Now, I heard that at one point at the Reno Tournament of Champions, going for the Trinity, did you wrestle Kendra at that tournament? I did. I did. And the funny thing about that, going back to what we talked about earlier, so Kendra was really good. So, I mean, she – I mean, the time, like, there weren't really girl wrestling. So, I mean, there was, there was too easy. She was like, it was too easy for me. Like, she didn't go to girls' tournaments, basically. So, she really only went to boys' tournaments. And, you know, it was, you know, Cameron, her younger brother. You know, she was – and Kendra and then Jimmy, her older brother. Um, and, I mean, and Jim just treated Kendra like them. So, it was just like, yeah, well, we're going to go take these dudes out. You know, you're wrestling the boys' tournament. You're going to make these dads cry. It was, that's what his thing was. He's like – you wait if you make them cry, make the kids cry and make the dad cry. You know, that was like basically the, that was, and she had this, she was strong. She was a good, great athlete. I mean, she, she, uh, and she had a great headlock. That was like what her thing was. And, uh, like freight train double legged headlock. And if you're wrestling a youth kid that has a great double legged headlock, that's scary. And you're wrestling a girl that has a great double legged headlock. It's like extra fearful. So, um, we wrestled in the quarterfinals and my dad was like, you know, just, being the high anxiety that he was at the time, he's like, you got to be ready. Well, that was like the first time in my life I woke up with a back spasm. So I wake up, you're talking about that back injury that I had, you know? So I wake up and I can't even tie my shoes. I can't like do my socks. I can't tie my shoes. And I'm like, oh my gosh. Like I have to wrestle this girl. She's so tough. I came and warm up this morning. I'm, basically, I'm crying my warm up. You know, he's a kid. You just like crying your warm up because you, uh, like worried and uh <laughs> luckily i could rely on just she was also afraid to wrestle me and i submit next year and pin her in like 30 seconds so <laughs> that was I, that was i love it dude um i had to ask because that that story's been tossed around the rumor mill and i wasn't sure if it was true or not but uh, i figured it was last question for you is i often think about this too knowing that we we're going to chat today how different would your life and all of college wrestling be had Kale stayed at Iowa State and you became a Cyclone. Do you ever think about that? I do. Um, yeah, I mean. How long were you committed before you decided to go to Penn State? So I committed early. So I didn't even really go through the recruiting process. You know, I, I knew that I wanted to wrestle for him, so I committed as a junior. Um, and so I didn't really go through that process much. I remember, I mean, so at the time, you know, Iowa State was, was doing well. Um, and, you know, it's just, it's hard to say. I mean, just think of going back and think about the lineup that would have been at Iowa State at the time, you know, and being a part of that lineup. You know, I think, you know, we would have definitely done well. I mean, Kale is a guy that, and I just said this to someone the other day, it's like, you know, I believe in him so much. Everything he does is successful, you know, and I think, you know, he, he's one of those guys, you, he says something, and you're like, 
okay, yeah, it's going to happen. You know, kind of like Coach Cow. You know, it's kind of mm-hmm. the same thing. He says, hey, yeah, we're going to do this. Like, All right, let's do it. You know, so, you know, thinking, man, it, w- would it have been different at Iowa State? Yeah, I mean, it's hard to say. I mean, I remember getting recruited. And uh, I remember one of the coaches, like, a- as I wasn't going there, you know, they're like, well, you're never going to win a national championship on the East Coast. No East Coast team's ever won a national championship, you know, because the Midwest was so dominant at the time. And I remember taking them like, yeah, no, we will, you know, we will do that, you know, and we did, we won four of them, you know, and when I was there and obviously continue to win four more afterwards. So, I mean, that's, gets kale, you know, it's just, I think, so it's, he's just got a great, great gift of motivating people and adapting to different personalities and um, just has a very, just very level head and how he can just navigate different things. And I think that's just proven to be successful continually time after time. And so, yes, would it be different? Yeah. I mean, the world could be way different. I mean, I think having an East coast team that's been successful has just helped wrestling grow. You know um, I think it's helped wrestling grow because the media market that, you know, when you're at Penn state, you know, that's just a larger media market than being in the Midwest. And I think in the time as wrestling has grown, you know, and we have had more coverage on ESPN. I think that that, has been a factor of Penn State being a successful program. You know, I do think that that has played into that. So, I mean, how would wrestling be different? I, don't, I mean, it's hard to say, but I think hard to say. it's been for the better, you know, obviously, and I'm super grateful for, for being part of that. So you were just committed to Kale and wherever he was going, you were going. You didn't really go through the gauntlet of recruiting? I did a little bit when, um, when, when, he, went to, uh, when he went to Penn State because of the process of – because I was already signed there. So you have to go through a, you know, like a period of being released from your scholarship and then, you know, where can you go? And I mean, it's hard to remember all of that now. It's such a long time ago, but I, I did entertain other places just out of me. Like maybe I'm not going to be released to go to Iowa state I, or I'm going to go to Penn state. I think a lot of it had to do with when the new coach came, you know? Mm-hmm. So I think when AJ came, he's willing to like, Hey, listen, I want you to be happy. I'd had a relationship with him prior to this. And he's like, if you feel like you want to go somewhere else, then I'm, I get that. You know, where if it would have been someone else that came in there, like, no, we want you to stay, then, you know, I would have maybe – it wouldn't have been as easy. You know, they could have said, hey, you're not going here or what, whatever. I can't even remember it. I just was you – know, it ended up being um, – ended up working out really smoothly. So I didn't entertain other places. But, again, just – it just seemed like the right spot. I remember looking back that he just – I just remember being like, okay, I, I felt like I could go anywhere and I would have been – a great college wrestler, you know, I don't know, national champion once, maybe, I don't know, like that was always my aspiration, but I really felt that coach Kale and coach Casey, you know, and the staff coach Cody um, could have taken me to a new level. And I remember that then, and I stand by that now, you know, there's, there's no staff that could have done what they did for me. And I continually do at this point in my career, the same, you know, still jumping levels. So it's, uh, that was a great choice, man. Awesome. And I'm with you. It's great to see, Penn State doing their thing. Um, I just can't wait to see what's next, man, for you. Uh, for, for some of these Nittany Lion cards are awesome. And I just want to thank you for your time today, sir. It's been an honor. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. It's been, we've been a process trying to get this arranged. It's been mostly my fault. So I appreciate that. I appreciate you staying patient. And, no, I'm excited. I'm getting ready to compete in a couple of weeks, actually. So I'm going to wrestle Gabe Dean on the next thing around Wrestling Club Rockfin card. I'm excited about that. You know, Gabe is um, – Nice. I didn't know that. Let's, hell yeah. yeah. So we just announced, just announced that yesterday. So November 24th. So it's a Tuesday. Um, that will be, I'm excited for that match. You know, he's, he's going to be um, a great opponent. I mean, he's, he wrestled really well at the senior nationals. I mean, he, he did get caught in his last match, but I mean, he was winning eight zero. So I mean, I don't really kind of really fact that in as much, but I, I think that, you know, he's definitely a guy probably trying to see if he wants to make a comeback a six. Um, and if he does, I mean, he's a guy who's right in the mix, top couple person in the weight class for sure. You know, so oh, yeah. he's, I'm excited. I'm excited for this match, and I think it'll be it'll be really fun. And then we have another match uh, coming up in December on Rockfin as well. So, got to take care of business here in November, and then look forward to a, a big one in December. Let's do it, man. Let's do it. Thank you again, sir. It's uh, it's awesome. And like I said, been a fan for a long time from afar, and look forward to the future, brother. Thank you. Take care, man.